Many people underestimate a well-designed workspace and its impact on creativity. Hi, I'm Deo Asbin. I make videos on electronic music, tech, and lifestyle. And these are my three rules of creative space. I live in a modern studio apartment in Miami with a large walk-in closet big enough for a home studio. I don't like to own a lot, so I turn the closet space into a studio. The desk and swivel chair are from IKEA and cost me less than $200. Some people may choose to buy expensive studio desks, but I find it unnecessary. I also found this chair online to rest my legs on because I am not a big fan of stand-up desks. The bottom line is that you need to feel comfortable with the budget and the furniture, and often the best and most inspiring space is not the most expensive. When it comes to aesthetics, I like a clutter-free, minimalist approach and simple colors like black, white, and gray because they eliminate visual distractions. Actions. The closet already had white painted walls and a darker floor, so I opted for a black and white color palette, and it turned out looking like a spaceship. For acoustic treatment, I chose sleek hexagon panels that I found on Amazon. By the way, my entire studio setup, including the acoustic panels, can be found on my kit.co page linked in the description below. After trying out different monitors, I bought this Viotech ultralight curved gaming monitor that I also found on Amazon for just $250 during Black Friday. It has high refresh rate and fast enough graphics for my needs. It doesn't have 4K, but it's not a big deal because it works great for my projects and my pocket for now. The monitor easily connects to my 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. The laptop is maxed out in specs for fastest performance because I need the highest speed for my music, design, and video production work. Internal storage is capped at 2 terabytes, but you can have it as much as 4 and I think these days even 8. I'd rather just buy an external drive since I work with them a lot anyway. I use Samsung SSD drives, they're fast, small and light to carry around. And you can unlock it with a fingerprint scan if you need to protect your data. Just make sure you don't lose your password or your finger because if you do, you'd have to format the SSD and all the data will be gone. The MacBook Pro skin is a matte black 3M scratch resistant vinyl skin from D brand. It's got your precision, it looks stunning and you can apply it to the top, bottom, or trackpad area for a completely blacked out look. My studio monitors are Focal CMS65. They are more than 10 years old and have been discontinued by Focal, but they sound amazing and are still an excellent pair of near-field studio monitors, so I'm not upgrading them yet. What's more important than your speakers is whether your studio is professionally treated, and even then, I would recommend using reference software like Sonarworks that calibrates your headphones and speakers according to your room so your sound translates accurately anywhere. To mix audio and music, I use Bayer Dynamic DT1990 Pro open back headphones. I use them with Sonarworks and they sound great and are extremely comfortable for extended wear. As a backup, I will be purchasing the new III TMA wireless closed back headphones, which are also very comfortable and are lighter. To eliminate dusk vibration, I put my speakers on Iza Acoustic speaker stands that are more effective than regular foam stands. Next up is my Universal Audio Apollo Twin X audio interface. Since my studio is fairly small, I don't need extra inputs and outputs. It's also portable if I need to produce on the go and I can just put it in my backpack with the rest of my gear. When it comes to playing a keyboard, I'm not much of an instrumentalist, even though I'm classically trained. So I don't own a large keyboard. Akai MPK Mini Mark II and Rolly Seaboard Block are more than enough for my productions. I like the MPE functionality of the Rolly keyboard and I always loved Akai because it can do pretty much everything I need. They're small enough if I need to take my keyboards with me as well. My Bluetooth computer keyboard and mouse are from Apple, they're both rechargeable so I don't need to deal with batteries. And now that Apple stopped producing them in space gray, I'll definitely keep them for as long as I can. And finally, I have a Rode Studio Mic Boom arm. It's extremely convenient to mount it on a desk and since I don't have a dedicated voice recording booth, I bought this Chaotica Eyeball with a built-in pop filter for my Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser studio mic. As you can see, you don't need to have a fancy studio to create music and content. What really matters is designing a space that you really like because it will fuel your creativity and make you more productive. And if you keep that place clutter-free and minimalist, you'll end up spending more time in it, which will make you more creative and it will inspire you further. If you liked something in my studio setup, check out my kit.co page for tech and lifestyle items that I use, including my everyday carry and more. And if you liked music in this video, follow me on Spotify or SoundCloud. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.